Um, hi everyone, my name is Yifan Zhang. Uh, I'm a fourth year PhD student at Indiana University Bloomington. Um, Xue Xiang and I are co-first authors and uh, I'm here to present our study about library security, understanding the hazard of duplicate resources mediation in Android software supply chain. Um, today's mobile apps increasingly rely on the third party libraries to provide essential functionalities like advertisement, analytics, and in-app payment. However, integration of the libraries from less reliable sources could bring in security and privacy risks. Um, and previous study have investigated different types of malicious activities in third party libraries, such as ad fraud, harvesting sensitive user data, and tracking users without consent. The natural solution of mitigation of mitigate to mitigate such security risks introduced by uh, Android libraries always include static writing of library code and runtime inspection of its behavior. We then um, pose the question, even with an ideal solution against the malicious code, can libraries still launch attacks? According to our study, the answer is yes. So for the Android app, a key step in its building process is to package all of the resources, including those belonging to the third party libraries. Typically, the AAR file, the, and the standard Android library format, will contain diverse resources to support their operations, such as manifest file, asset folder, results folder. And here is a form about the security implication about the resources types. We can see that if some type of resources are manipulated by a malicious party, the consequence can be very serious, such as um, money in the middle attack or like uh, hijack attacks. Um, there's uh, previous, previous studies mostly focus on analyzing the codes inside the uh, classes.jar. Uh, however, there is an implicit assumption that the resources in the AR packages are innocent and harmless, but uh, is this a case? Resources in library and in the apps are managed by the Android Results Compiler, ARC. A complication during this process is that multiple libraries may have duplicate resources. Thereby, we raise another question. What will happen if two libraries have resources with duplicate names? In our study, we answered this question and we systematically explored the risks of duplicate resources mismediation, and we also measured the real world impact. Before we start, we need to have an understanding of results, of results mediation by ARC. In the case of duplicate resources in different libraries, ARC will select the resources from high priority libraries. That means the resources from lower priority library with the same name will be dropped. There are three rules to determine the priority. Um, consumer first rules means that if library two depends on library one, then library two has a higher priority. Local first rule means that the local libraries will have higher priority than remote libraries. Picking first rule means that in the Android dependencies list, libraries listed earlier will have higher priority. And here is a very simple example of the uh, prior priority rules. We have library 0, 1, 2, and library 2 depends on, depends on library 1, and then the priority will be uh, library 0, then library 2, and then library 1. So given these three rules, we found a way to write the priority of a malicious library. The first one depends on the consumer first rule. For malicious libraries, the most straightforward way to write the priority is to declare the victim library as its dependency. For the second strategy, we notice that apps often rely on a few Android platform libraries that are preset by Android Studio and are usually located in the very beginning of the dependencies list in the build.gradle. Thus, in practice, the platform libraries may have higher priority than other third-party libraries. The, the malicious library can elevate its priority by depending on some platform libraries. 
And to confirm this, the effectiveness of this strategy, we create a demo library that depends on these three platform libraries. And then we also collect 100 open source apps from GitHub, and we add our demo, lab, demo library as a dependency to the very end of the dependencies list. The result proved our strategy. The demo library has a higher priority than 97% of third-party libraries that are used by the open source projects. For the third strategy, recall the local library will have higher priority than remote libraries. Therefore, an attacker can distribute his malicious library as a local library. With this strategy, the malicious library can gain a higher priority than any remote third-party libraries. So here is the first attack example. Please notice that all of the attack introduced today will happen silently, which means that there will be no error, no warning. The whole building process will look perfect, except some stealthy attack happened. Right here is a part of JSON file in results folder from a payment library, and it defines a remote JavaScript URL. The, you, this JavaScript will be injected to its bank login web view page to process one time password. So however, what if the uh, JavaScript URL has been replaced and what if the replaced URL has been directed to a malicious code? And this is a real JavaScript URL and you are welcome to go and see our uh, encrypted JavaScript code. Um, the consequence is shown on the right side. The attacker will take over the bank login page, and the user's bank account and bank password can be leaked. Another risk is the manifest duplicate risk. Library developers can place security protection on the, uh, on the library components using certain manifest attributes, like Android permission, Android permission to limit its access or Android exported to, um, to determine whether it's available to other applications. However, we notice that Android provides a set of known markers. By using these known markers, a malicious library with higher priority can remove the protection by overriding the related attributes. And this can potentially lower down the protection. In the third risk, we want to answer a question. What can a malicious library do if it cannot gain higher priority? In our, previous, in our previous risk, the second risk, if the higher priority library does not define the known markers, um, like tools replace, in that case, ARC would raise an alarm to app developers, noting that the manifest files are not mergeable. However, what if the two manifest files are mergeable? Unfortunately, our study reveals that a lower priority malicious library can declare the same activity and add extra attribute to the, to the activity. Since the extra attributes do not conflict with the original declaration in the high priority library, these extra attributes will be merged into the final manifest file automatically. And as we can see, these extra attributes can break the security promise of the high priority victim library by lowering down the security protection. In our measurement study, we want to answer three questions. The first one is how many libraries contain sensitive resources that our attack can target? The second one is that how likely can a library sensitive resources be contaminated by another library? if they are integrated into the same app. And the last question is that, are there any real-world apps that may have been affected by our risks? This picture presents the overview of our methodology. In the first step, we build a library dataset and an app dataset by crawling Maven Central and Google Play. After that, we identify the sensitive library resources types in the next step, we run three tasks to answer the above three question. And here is our result. Um, we generate a list about different result types, about the integration risks, 
and the affected apps number. And um, the integration risks, this column means that uh, if we randomly pick two libraries from Maven Central repository, how likely will they have a collision in such results types? And as you can see, the ratio is pretty high. For example, if we randomly pick two libraries in Maven Central repository, there are 22% 22 possi 22 possibility that they have a collision in backend URL. And we are very curious about why duplicate sensitive results are so common across third party libraries, and we found these four potential reasons. The first one is that we noticed that a large portion of the library pairs depends on a common library. However, the common library is often not self-contained, and it requires its consumer to pre-configure some settings. In this case, the pre-configured settings will share the same results name. The second one is that the developer of 27% library pairs choose to use simple and generic names for sensitive resources, such as password, such as server URL. And the third reason is that we found 25% of library pairs have duplicate resources since they are, they are all following the resources name in the sample code of official document. For example, um, Google's document asks developer to put network security configuration into into the uh, XML folder and make the name to be network security config. And the last reason is that we found that um, some dupli duplicate resources are caused by library templates. For example, some library developer may using the uh, open source project, they may use the public library builder services. And we also provide a mitigation uh, as a compile time resolves writing mechanism, please refer to our paper for uh, more information about, uh, about the details. And thank you for your listening.